the seven year anniversary of the launch of the FWBN. Um, on that day, we did a live uh, broadcast, which was a, a wireless broadcast, really unheard of. This is before um, CNN and all those places were using um, the internet in that way. Um, Skype interviews, we were doing all of those things. And um, we did um, an attack on the gates of hell. Um, we went up to the gates of TBN and we prayed. Um, we did spiritual warfare um, and uh, came against the prosperity gospel, which is the gospel of greed that has overtaken uh, this country and much of the world. We launched that with a very powerful testimony from one of the founders of the prosperity gospel, Jim Baker, a um, uh, uh, a powerful uh, preaching from him, teaching from him um, that he uh, allowed us to use and, and to get out there on the internet because he wanted people to know. You know, he had taught a lot of people uh, the prosperity gospel, and the Lord showed him while he was in prison that it was a lie. We went on to denominations to demolish denominations th through the, the written word and the prophetic word of the Lord. Divisions in the church uh, caused by needless, senseless uh, doctrinal divisions that are not divisions that God is going to be making in the kingdom, demolishing those with the word of God, um, divisions between men and women, the assault on the family in the body of Christ by dividing the men and the women and by silencing the women who have been called uh, to preach, to teach, to offer wisdom, to prophesy um, and causing that uh, that rift uh, right in the middle of the foundational uh, unit of God's kingdom, which is the family. We've been uh, attacking those gates of hell, clergy abuse. We, uh, more recently this year, we have been attacking um, the uh, LGBT misogyny, the issue of um, the, uh, the agenda of the LGBT community to silence women, uh, to take their rights, um, and the issues that have come up in Seattle this week with men coming into women's bathrooms in the name of transgender equality, not protecting our women. And also, um, this month, this very month here in Phoenix, Arizona, coming against Satan himself as the Satanist uh, uh, have come and, and risen up here in this city um, to silence prayer in our city councils. And they're moving on to do that everywhere that they can. Um, as some of you know, I testified at the city council meeting um, about the abuse of women and, and the, uh, the degradation of women um, that, uh, that that group perpetrates um, and also um, just coming against that spiritually, that spiritual stronghold. So what we're seeing happening here as the end times come into full bloom is that that great deception, which we were told about in 2 Thessalonians, is falling upon everyone. <clears throat> and as that scripture says, because they did not love the truth, that the Lord would hand them over to believe the lie and that they would be deluded. Okay. And this is, this comes from the spirit of antichrist. So we're seeing that come into full bloom as Satan himself is now rising up and saying, you cannot pray. And people are bowing to that and saying, yes, okay, we're going to bow to the will of Satan. So he is unmasking himself. And we're going to see this um, in many different areas all over the world. Um, so what we're here to do is to offer you the light and we're going to continue to do that. No matter what we we're here. Okay, we're here for you, and we know that you're here for us. Continue to watch your teachings, share it with your family. That's what's important. This word of God is the only thing that's going to get you through in these end times. Satan's going to come against you just like he comes against us, but in Christ, the, Bi the Bible tells us that the spirit that lives in us is greater than the spirit in the world. We have victory in Jesus Christ. So no matter what the circumstances look like, no matter how messed up things are in your family or your life, we've got a lot of prayer requests here. I hope that we can get to some of those. Um, but, uh, but, you know, all of us are in that state of struggling with sin. Do not be discouraged because this is about faith. It's not about how strong you are. It's not about how smart you are or how good you look um, to everyone else or even how Christian you seem to be. This is about trusting that God is so good and he's so strong and he's so wise and he's so loving that he has a way of salvation, even for people like you and people like me, flawed people, people with messes in their families. God can take all of those things and work them together for good, for his glory, for his kingdom. And all we have to do is humble ourselves today. So I want to ask you to take stock of yourself today. When you look around, don't be discouraged. When you look inward, don't be discouraged. But look at yourself and say, you know, how can I humble myself to the word of God today? What areas of my life do I know I'm in rebellion against God? 
And what areas of my life do I feel so out of control and in fear? Those are the things that Jesus said, come and lay these burdens, your fears, your worries, your sins. Lay your burdens at my feet. Take up my yoke because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Our entire job in this time is to listen to the voice of God and follow Jesus. That's called trust. It's how we love him. We trust him and we obey him. So love the Lord your God with all of your heart in this time. And don't worry. Don't be afraid. He's going to take us little people and he's going to use us. As it says that the wise in the end times, that they're going to stumble. Does anybody know what it feels like to stumble? It says that they're going to stumble. But then they will be, it'll be for their refining. And then they will be raised up like bright shining stars and they will bring many people to righteousness. You know, you don't even have to be a preacher to do that. You just have to get up every morning and say, who can I love today? Start with your family. One of the best ways to show love is through submission, by putting someone else first, by showing them that they're more important than you are in your estimation, and by serving other people, becoming a servant as Jesus did for us. So that's what you do this week, and I encourage you to come to Jesus today. You know, he can wipe all of those sins clean. He can wipe all of those worries clean. And I just encourage you to come to him. Just take some time alone with him after this broadcast. Whenever you have time today, get alone in your prayer closet, in your room, in the bathroom, wherever, you know, moms, we know we got to pray in the bathroom, right? <laughs> it's the only place you can get alone, whatever, you know, in the shower, get alone with God and let him know that you are serious about your relationship with him and take all those things to him. He will take your burdens from you. He's going to use you, and I want to hear about it, so use that decision button too, okay? We got some prayer requests. We have Lisa, who's struggling with addiction. We, um, we, we want to pray for John and, um, and his people in his town in Canada uh, for the spiritual oppression there. We want to pray for Randy, who has a need for healing. Um, he's got ringing in his ears and trouble when he eats. Um, we've got Colin uh, wants uh, for Jesus to show him personally what he wants um, Colin to do for him, okay? Then we've got Stanley. Um, I love to hear this. He had a praise. He was asking God to make him pure in certain areas in his life, and he really felt that God delivered him in that area. Praise God. We're going to pray for Stanley. Beverly um, said that she, she just wrote to say that she was listening to the Bible teaching that we have, and it really brought her revelation and kind of everything fell into place um, for certain things for her um, understanding. So praise God for his word. It brings light to us, right? And so thank you, Beverly, for letting us know that and for that praise. And then also for my dear friends, Anne and Bonnie, um, they also need healing. So let's all pray together right now. Father in heaven, we praise your holy name. We thank you that when we are weak, you are strong. And I, as much or more than anybody else, know this on a personal level, that when I am weak, you are strong. And we thank you that we don't have to look to ourselves or hope in ourselves because you are on your throne and your love never fails and your love is unconditional. Even Paul, who was a murderer, who was the responsible for the deaths of Christians, you took him, you forgave him, and you cleaned up his soul, you cleaned up his spirit, and you used him in a mighty way to bring life and the word of God to so many people. Thank you for all these trophies of grace that you've given us, all these imperfect people in the Bible to show us that you mean us when you say anyone, anyone who calls on the name of the Lord. So those of us who are addicts, those of us who are have sexual addictions and all kinds of uh, problems in our lives, those of us who have emotional scars and pain that causes us to, to not even know how to have good relationships, those of us who don't have everything tied up in a nice, neat little bow, those of us who have uh, financial issues in our lives, Lord God, that you said, blessed are the poor. You said, blessed are the meek. Blessed are you when men hate you and, and they despise you and they look down on you. You said, blessed are you when you're in that state and when you're weak, I'm strong. So we thank you that you meant us when you said anyone who calls on your name will be saved. I pray for Lisa. <clears throat> we believe that you are releasing her from her addiction. She is calling out to you because she said, I don't even know what else to say. I'm addicted. I need help. Help her, Lord God. And we rebuke the spirit that is, is involved there. And we ask you to heal her body, to, um, to restore her body, her neurology, her body, um, to a normal state. 
um, the state that it's supposed to be in without that uh, drug involved. We pray that you would deliver her, Lord God, in a mighty way in Jesus' name. I pray for John and the people there in his town in Canada, Lord God, and the spiritual oppression that's there. I pray that you would break it, like pierce through that darkness with your light, Lord God. I pray that you would do something mighty in the hearts of the people there, that there would be revival, true revival, Lord God, end times revival, that revival that you promise is you will pour out your spirit on all people. I pray that you would break the depression, that, that you would break um, any religious spirit or you know, anything, uh, whatever that spiritual demonic stronghold is, we speak against it and we speak its end. We come against that gate of hell in the name of Jesus and we speak freedom to the people in Johnstown. In Jesus' name, bless those people, Lord God. And I pray for um, Randy right now. I pray that you would heal the ringing in his ears and whatever's causing it, whatever also is causing him to have trouble eating. I pray that you would have mercy, Lord God, and that you just reach down right now and place your nail-scarred hands on Randy as we can't do it as we would like to in a body, but we can in spirit be there with him, and we ask you to bridge the gap and physically place your hands on him and heal him today, um, the root cause of that as well as uh, the symptoms, Lord God. I pray for Colin that you would give him wisdom. He's asking for wisdom. He wants you to personally show him what you want him to do for you, Jesus. So I pray that you would give him a mission. I pray that you would show him, give him deep conviction and, and deep passion for what you are passionate about and what you want to set his hand to. Just as the spirit of wisdom um, gave the craftsman the wisdom that he needed to make all of the things for the temple, I pray that same spirit of wisdom will come into Colin, Lord God, and that you would inspire Colin, and that you would move him forward, and that you would show him what you want him to do in Jesus' name. I pray for Stanley. Um, I thank you for uh, the deliverance in his life, and I pray that you would give him continued victory in that area in his life, and continue uh, to gain victory in every area of his life where there is any kind of sin hiding, Lord God. I pray that you would just open up the windows, let the light shine in, and sweep all the gunk out, get all those demons forces out, Lord God, and let him be just a pure, humble heart before you. And I thank you for that victory that you're giving him. I pray for Beverly. Just bless her. Continue to bless her as she listens to your word. Thank you for the revelation that you've given her through your written word and for the revelation you give to all of us through that word. I pray that you would give us a hunger um, for the true bread so that we have to have it every single day. And I thank you for Beverly and her praise, Lord God. I pray that you would bless her. I also pray for my two dear friends, Anne and Bonnie, Lord God. I pray for faith. I pray that you would give them faith. I pray that you would give them comfort. And I pray that you would uh, work healing in their bodies. I speak against all of the negative and, and diseased forces that are coming against them. And I call them lies in the name of Jesus. And I speak life to their bodies. And I speak life to their hearts. As you speak your love to them, let them hear it. Every word. Every word of compassion, let nothing be shut out. I pray that you would give them <clears throat> that hope that they need, as we all need, to lean on you, Lord God. We can't stand up by ourselves. We can't do this by ourselves. But you are there for us, and I pray that they would know that more than ever before in their lives, that they would know that, and that you would be there to heal them and to get them through this time. And I thank you for that, Lord God. I thank you for your great compassion and for the fellowship that we have in the Word of God, that we can come together from all over the world, and we can agree on one thing, and that is that you are the King Jesus, and we are with you in establishing this kingdom because we believe in you as a king, not because we believe in some dead doctrine, but because we believe in the living and loving word of God in the form of Jesus Christ, our King. Thank you, Father, for that great gift, for sacrificing your son for us and forgiving our sins. We humbly accept that gift and offer ourselves as living sacrifices, as just a token of the great love that we have and appreciation that we have for you. We praise your holy name, Lord God, and we thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much, you guys. Gary, do you think I have time to do anything else, or do we need to go? Are we doing okay? Okay. Um, we seem to be doing fine on the live stream. Praise God. So let's do our scripture reading. Um, since we're talking about establishing God's kingdom, we're going to do Psalm 2, which talks about Jesus. This is a prophecy about our king, okay? It says, Why do the nations conspire 
and the peoples plot in vain. The kings of the earth take their stand, and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Let us break their chains, they say, and throw off their fetters. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. Then he rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will rule them with an iron scepter. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you be destroyed in your way, for his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Amen. So everyone go on over to Monica Dennington dot com, uh, dot com right now. Remember to use all three of your buttons. That's prayer, donate and decision and enjoy today's message, which is truth and consequences, choosing an antichrist kingdom.